playing the Nintendo Switch in handheld mode, you're kind of stuck with these guys here. These are the Joy-Cons that come attached to the system. And well, they're not great. They're small, they're compact, they don't have a whole lot of features to them, and they tend to drift. Now, one of the first companies to go ahead and come out with a replacement set of Joy-Cons for the Switch was the team over at Hori with the split pad. And I wasn't a fan of the split pad. If you want, go ahead and check that link right up there for a review of that. But they've come out with a new split pad compact, which looks to address a lot of the issues that I had with the original ones. These are smaller, these are lighter, they're more compact. Let's go ahead, let's take these out of the box, let's see how they come out of the box, and see if this really does address some of the issues of the originals. So here we have the split pad compact here and you can see it is much smaller than what the split pad pro was. It looks a lot more similar to what the original pro controller uh, it looks a lot closer to what the Joy-Cons are off of the Switch, or really off of the Switch Lite. Er ergonomic controller for handheld mode. Product does not include the Switch OLED model or Nintendo Switch. I'm glad they clarified that. So on the back, has an extra grip for the perfect fit, programmable rear triggers, full-size shoulder buttons, and a precision D-pad. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what we got. Now this is something that, if you are interested, I will have a link down below in a pinned comment to where I purchased these uh, over on Amazon. And they offer these in a couple of different colors. I actually kind of like the cranberry looking ones myself, uh, but these were the only ones that were actually available at this time for a reduced cost. Now I will say first things first, these things are super light, um, much lighter than the original Joy-Cons, which we'll compare them to side by side in a second. Uh, face buttons feel clicky, home button, assign turbo, assign turbo, those all feel good. The D-pad feels terrible uh, in, in my view. It actually feels worse. They have a Joy-Con that they make, um, which I'll have linked up there for you, where basically it's just a, a left Joy-Con that gives you a D-pad. That D-pad feels much better than this. I am not a fan of this uh, at all, I will tell you that much. Um, Digital feel here to the shoulder triggers, I'll say that as well. The analog sticks don't feel bad. The buttons are definitely bigger on the right Joy-Con, but they also feel more close together than what the original Joy-Con is. Now, as I suspected, this does not have any sort of onboard battery, so as such, the L and R are not there. SR, SL, same thing on here. Um, so these have to be used only on the Nintendo Switch that for the price, no. No way, no how, no. That's a huge loss on here. So let's go ahead. We are going to just connect it to our original switch to start with. And this is the one that we had playing in the background at the start. And it is, you know, working exactly as it should there. It, it, the home button worked. That's working just fine. We'll go down to controllers. And here you can see in the lower corner that does show on there again because it's on the original Switch screen kind of, well, not great. Um, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna pop that aside. Let's take a look at the manual real quick. So one thing that you do need to make sure is that you do have Pro Controller communication turned on on your Switch. And I've got a video showing how to do that linked right up there for you. Um, to go ahead and assign the buttons, what you do is you press the assign button, press the button that you want to assign a, essentially to the back, and then assign it to the button itself. So what I would do, for example, I would hit assign A, and then now that button should be assigned. Did not work, so do I have to hold it down? While pressing assign, okay, so I have to hold that. Did that slightly wrong, so that was mine. Hold that down, A, and now I go ahead, hit the back trigger, and that should be assigned. Yep, that is, that worked just fine. So that's interesting to note. So again, you'll see my button, my hands are nowhere near any of the other buttons on here hit the back, goes into uh, the game. So that, that actually works quite well. Turbo mode is you, so I can unassign or no? 
So to unassign, you press the assign button and then the back and now the back trigger does nothing. To do turbo, hold down turbo and the button that you want. So pretty interesting there. And it also does rapid fire as well. Now we've cleared it out. Overall, pretty simple to set that up. And then again, this is just walking through the turbo functions. It will have um, turbo, turbo hold on, and turbo off, and then turbo all buttons. You would press the turbo button while pressing the plus and minus button. You can change the turbo speed if you want to as well. So it has some interesting features there, and I think the rest of this is just, yep, everything else is just different languages. So what do we got? About four pages. Yeah, four pages. Now, just to compare the size of these as well, you can see these are my Switch OLED Joy-Cons versus the Hori Split Pads Compact. And, I mean, they are considerably wider, so they do give you more to hold on to. They're also considerably thicker. You can see that this is about twice as thick as these here. Um, and I wanted to compare as well the button sizes. Here you can see, you know, clearly these buttons are definitely larger, but I think they're also tighter together what, than what these are. So um, good, but not great. The analog stick tops are bigger on here, obviously, than that. And one last thing we are going to do is we are going to hook it up to our Switch OLED, and we're going to actually capture some gameplay. Um, now, one of the things on here that I want to double check as well, and the manual did not call this out at all, was Amiibo support. Now, the original split pad did not support Amiibo. I'm not expecting these two. Okay, so now this is on my Switch OLED, and you'll be able to tell that right away because of how much brighter the screen is. Does not appear. Let's check and see if it'll wake from sleep. So, okay, there's that. We're gonna turn it off. There it is, okay. So it does wake the system from sleep. That is good to, to note on here. I am gonna just double check real quick how the D-pad works later on, but I do wanna check Amiibo support, Amiibo. Connect a controller that can read Amiibo. So there it is right there. This does not read Amiibo. So we don't even have to waste our time testing the joysticks on it. This is clearly not capable of reading Amiibo. So let's dive into a game. We just got River City Girls from Die Hard Gamer Bros. Been playing it a little bit here and it's pretty fun. You know, that works fine. The D-pad works fine for that. This soundtrack is like totally 80s pop and whatnot. Felt like it missed a button press there a second ago, but we'll see if if that continues or if that was a one-time thing. Yeah, this feels decent. I just don't know that I... I'm not the biggest fan of this overall layout, I will say. I do like how the recruitment process works, how you can basically make other enemies your friends and have them fight with you instead of against you. Um, all right, so that's pretty neat. How about some Mario Kart 8 Deluxe? I have been playing a ton of this lately. The new update is phenomenal. I absolutely love it. I will say one of the things I absolutely love about the Switch OLED is for filming like this, the fact that you can actually see the display on the camera and I don't have to do a whole lot of trickery uh, with my settings to make it happen. I really appreciate that. Got her. Um, this feels good as far as responsiveness and everything. I, I can't really complain. Yeah, this is feeling pretty good. I mean, the analog sticks are, are, are working well. The buttons are are working well too. Let's go, let's try the Super NES Online with the D-pad and everything because, I mean, this is just something that's meant, you know, the D-pad is meant for games like this because, like I say, I, at least initial just testing, not a fan. Gotta get by Charge and Chuck there. Oh crap. Got him. Yeah, the D-pad is performing better than it feels. Oh, crud. So let's see what we can do. If we can rewind that, there we go. Win if you can, lose if you must, but always cheat. Per Jesse the body. 
Okay, that D-pad is working better than I thought that it would. So I'll go back here. And what is the one that we normally test new controllers with? That's right, we test out new controllers with Street Fighter 2 or Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Edition. So one thing of note on here, and I haven't talked about it to this point, is the fact that there is no built-in rumble on these. For $55, $60 Joy-Con replacements, no. There's also no built-in battery, so you can only utilize these in handheld mode. No. No, no. Nay, nay. If Nixie and Binbok and Nexago can all make replacement Joy-Cons, that have battery packs and rumble, Hori should be able to for the same or lower cost. I, I No. From a comfort standpoint, I will say these do feel more comfortable to me than the um, uh, than their original split pad. I was not a fan of that at all. This is probably, I would say, closer to either the Binbok or the um, Nixie slim grips. Okay, I've been able to pull off everything except for the dragon uppercut. So I was able to pull off all the moves, but not actually in live combat as it were. Um, capture works, that's good. Yeah, the D-pad to me is feeling a little sluggish. We're going to switch over to the uh, to the analog stick. I know a lot of people don't like the fact that I use the analog stick to uh, play fighting games, but it is what it is. Ooh, she got me there. Oh, she got me again. And I got her with the dragon uppercut using the analog stick. You saw that just happened. All right, that's pretty cool. Uh, we are actually going to go, I'm going to go back into the Switch or the uh, NES, Super NES Online. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Star Fox real quick because I do want to try the turbo along with uh, the fire mode button. So we're going to do turbo B. There's the auto fire. So let's see how this performs. Oh, that's one of the dangers with having the turbo auto on right now is it took that course of action already for me. So there you can see the turbo is going. He's gone turbo. Oh, I missed that one. I did see you and I shot you anyway, Slippy, deal with it. So I will say I do think the turbo fire is a little bit slow stock. So I could see adjusting that to, uh, to the faster speeds like what the manual brought up. Oh, that was no good. Why did it stop firing there? It just stopped firing all of a sudden. That's weird. So what are my overall thoughts and opinions on this? Um, it, it is better than the, than the standard Split Pad Pro. I won't say that much. I still think for what it is, it's way overpriced and underperforms. Um, adding features like the turbo is nice. The back buttons are nice as well. And I think ergonomically, these are better too. However, the fact that for $50 plus, there's no onboard battery. There is no rumble support. When you can get replacement Joy-Cons from third parties for $30 that have all of those features. That to me is unacceptable. Now I know that Hori just came out with their adapter deal where you can use the split pad original wirelessly. Uh, that to me is just an insult that it's an optional accessory uh, that should be built into the original split pad and these as well. Um, Responsiveness is okay. You know, one thing we are going to do real quick, I'm going to turbo A. So we're going to turn turbo off altogether. There we go. I'm just going to dive into punch out real quick. Just a, you know, one last test of responsiveness. Um, would I recommend these? No, I wouldn't. Um, I think that they're just overpriced for what they are. I really, really do. Um, the D-pad is better than what I thought it was going to be. 
initially, but it's still not great. It still does not have a great feeling to it. Um, the analog sticks are very smooth. I do like the analog sticks. No Amiibo support, no battery, no rumble. It's There's so many compromises that have been made here that I, I just... I'm not a fan. I'm just not a fan, especially if you look at Nixie and Binbok and what they've done, and Nexago for that matter, with their replacement Joy-Cons um, that do more, feel better, for less money. I mean, that's just... <sighs> this is unacceptable to me as far as what they're charging for these. These are a $25 accessory all day long at most, and the fact that they're charging $50 for them, pretty unacceptable. And the reason why I wanted to dive into punch out real quick was to to test out the the lag and latency as far as button presses to input response um, on the D-pad and on the A and B buttons as well. Um, yeah, I mean they're plenty responsive, and for a wired controller, I pretty much figured they would be. Um, and this is you know pretty much exactly as the Split Pad Pro performed. But this is such a compromised experience. I honestly, unless you just absolutely have to have something physically different, there are better options out there. I dare say the original Joy-Cons are better experienced than this. But let's go ahead, sit down, Glass Joe. It's time for some final thoughts. There you have my look at the Hori Split Pad Pro. Does this fix the Joy-Con issue? Kind of, but not really. So I have to say that a lot of my thoughts on the original Split, split Pad Pro still applies here. No rumble, no Amiibo support, no battery on it. You can't use these off of the system unless you spend more money for their adapter. What sense does that make? Seriously. Now I get people love the Split Pad Pro. I love the design of them. I love the concept of them. I hated using them. And these, to me, kind of more of the same. There are better, cheaper options out there that provide more, more features at a lower price. And that's what I just can't get over with these. I understand that Hori uses good quality products when they build their stuff. I get that. Their components are really, really good. They're not twice the value of what you're providing good. Now, if these were $25 to $30, like I mentioned, maybe. But at $50 bucks and up, no. This is a hard pass for me. Um, I don't even think the ergonomics are that good. I mean, that's the other thing. It's better to me than the split pad. I, I will give you that. And I do like the fact that it doesn't have this huge gap here. That's better. It does make the system already, that I think is too wide, even wider still. This is nowhere near as good of a handheld gaming experience on the Switch, at least in my opinion, as like the Fixture Gaming S1 and S2. Those are the definitive ways to play the Switch in handheld. Now, you can't always do that. Sometimes, and that does cost more when you figure the cost of a Pro Controller plus the Fixture Gaming, either S1 or S2. Grant you that. But it's better balanced, you get better performance, better control, better features, than what you get here. And the Binbok or the Nixie uh, Joy-Cons are also better for less money. Th again, there's so many compromises that I feel like Hori made here that this could have been, this could have been an acknowledgement of their shortcomings of the Split Pad Pro, address them with this, and provide a new form factor. They did none of that. This is more of the same and I'm really disappointed. I'm actually honestly probably gonna end up returning these, but these are just my opinions. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Now, if you think I'm all wet, if you wanna check these out for yourself, I will have a link down below to where you pick. You can pick these up through our Amazon affiliate link. It does help support the channel, so uh, that does go without saying. Now, if you do also wanna check out our original uh, review that we did of the Split Pad Pro, I will have that link for you down below. And if you like what you see here, if you want to see more, do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. That way when we do upload new content, you are kept informed and up to date. And hopefully we keep you from wasting money on something that quite honestly, there are better alternatives out there. Now, if you do want to see some of those other videos that we've done, those are coming up for you right now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to help support 
Rockstyle Productions and be a part of our community, there's a number of different ways you can do so. First and foremost, join us over on our Patreon page or become a channel member here on YouTube. By joining through either one of those methods, you get early access to just about all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. We also give you shout outs at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also pick up some awesome Rock Solid Productions swag. We've got t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more available through our Teespring store on screen right now too. You can also pick up some of our awesome 3D printed cartridge stands, Amiibo holders, Nintendo DS holders, and more by visiting our 3D printer store on screen right now as well. Links for everything will be down below in a pinned comment. If you want to stay up to date with everything we have going on here at Rock Solid Productions, make sure that you're following us on the different social media networks. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions, Instagram at instagram.com slash Productions GK, and Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. If you're looking to pick this and other retro and modern gaming accessories up, make sure that you head on over to castlemaniagames.com. He has a feature over there called Castle Cash, where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases, and Castle Cash is just like cash. He also offers convenient payment plans for more expensive items over $50. Finally, make sure that you use promo code ROCKSOLID10 when you're shopping at CastlemaniaGames.com as it can save you up to 10% on most items on the website. Again, thank you for watching this episode and I cannot wait to see you again soon.